All right, well, welcome to the Nitty Gritty Podcast. We have our first official guest today. We didn't count, Andrew. No. Because we're the hosts. Yeah, it wasn't That was official. like a get to know your host episode one and two. It's like zero, zero, one, zero, zero, two. That's actually a good idea. It's like the preseason. Yeah. But we're jumping straight into the big dogs now. D-League. D-League? Yeah. You're not D-League. Listen, in the restaurant game in Utah, you're t- top of the mountain. There's quite a few qualifiers there. The restaurant game in Utah County, no. Southern no, Utah no, no, County, no, no, no. South Side of Campus. You're the man. You're so full of it. He's humble. His name is Jason Edwards. He's the founder of this little place called J Dogs. Yep. 15 years next month. It's a great story, and we're going to get into that. Okay. I technically want to know about the person a little bit more than the story because I think the mm. story's been told, but I think we need to touch on it a little bit. Okay. So I I consider Jason, I always joke and call him my mentor. It's a joke to you? It's not a joke to <laughs> you me. You just said you it are, was. I said. I joke and say. That hurts okay. my feelings. You're going to edit that. Can we edit that, no, please? leave it in. It's good stuff. This is honesty. It's not a joke. It's just. What? Speak your mind. <sighs> this is going to be good. Whenever I need something. It, whether it's borrow money, because I don't have a financial advisor, because I'm still in line with this company called Aventus. But mm, I don't I have the... Uh, see, I bet he would sign you like tomorrow if he saw your bank account. Mm-mm. But whenever I need like equipment, you know, I've been in the game, what, since 2013? Yeah. So let me get my calculator. Hold on. So anytime... So six years. Anytime that Cam needs something... He calls you. He calls. But if he's taking these cool vacations or fantasy football, <laughs> doesn't my get phone it. doesn't ring. Nope. Not one time. It's funny. I I've ha- never been invited to fantasy football either. I haven't either. Cam. It sounds fun. So I just don't I mean, want to ruin our friendships. Year? Chicago? Yeah, it's Chicago. Oh. There's still an opening if you want in. I don't know. It's a pretty rated R group, though. It's too many F words for me. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that? I can just They're tell. not for me. I can tell. The mic's right here. You got to talk into the mic. People can't hear you. All right. Okay, so so yeah, you you started in what, 2004? 2004, summer of 04, doing but, the, go ahead. No, I was going to say the best part is the Stratocaster. Telecaster. Yeah, Telecaster. Stra- Telecaster. I had a Fender Telecaster. So what's that worth? What would that be worth today? What is it worth today? 13, 1400 probably. Wait, you still have it? I thought you sold I it. I pawned it. I got it back. Oh, you got it back. Yeah. So a little background, like for the, those of you the same know. one you sold, you got it back. Mm-hmm. That's, That's what pretty pawn, cool. Yeah. So Don't I borrowed. Be smart. I, okay. I, I borrowed. All of us go to pawn shops. <laughs> I borrowed money against it. Okay. And then got it back. So for those of you that don't know, he pawned mm-hmm. his Fender Telecaster to get money to open the famous J Dogs. Yeah. Shed. What do we call that? It's called the shack. Shack. Yeah. Shack. Don't call the hut. I didn't call it a hut. Don't call it anything else but the shack. That's what it is. The shack. The shack. You ever serve out of the shack still? You know, we tried. We shut it down six or seven years ago, and then uh, we got this awesome idea to kind of remodel it and open it. We didn't really do much advertising, but then people were like, why am I standing out here in the hot sun when I could be inside in the AC? Right right next door. So it had like a two-hour run. Okay. It's good, but I still keep it. And uh, just like my food storage, man, if, if the building burns down, I'll just fire up the shack next door. Got a little backup? Yeah. I think it deserves a historical marker. I want to eventually do something like the Liberty Jail, like Visitor Center, where you just kind of <laughs> build something around it and then have little wax figures inside and then speakers you stand under <laughs> with the story. <laughs> yeah. Cough. Don't make me laugh. This isn't supposed to be entertaining, Okay. Okay. It's supposed to be very. But that's serious. what I want to do. I ended up. I ended up uh, tying that place up. Yeah. Bought it, and uh, it's mine now. That's cool. It's my little piece of paradise down there. That's where it all started. It was. That's I'm, like my Brinkman smoker in the garage. Seen it. It's should, pretty awesome. Should you should have that it. out in the front. I should see. I shouldn't have brought that up. But you know what? All these great ideas on what I need to do. But th- people have a thousand great ideas of what I need to do too. So. Yeah, but yours are pretty much always good. I will give you <sighs> mostly some credit. good. But not awesome. They're just kind of middle of the road. I don't know. 
I should yeah. read some of your texts on on this podcast that you've sent me that I've screenshotted and saved because <laughs> they just they were like poetry. You get I, it. You get I what care, I'm trying to I do. I care here. deeply about you and your success. I, I know, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I learned I learned a lot from it. Yeah. So I actually have just one question. When you were getting started, I've I mean the story's been told before. What made you think? Okay, this is going to work. I mean. I, what made you keep riding the bus back and forth with supplies? When were you just like, eh, this isn't it? I just read that today, by the way. I've never known that. Yeah, it's crazy, I could just right? see you with some I didn't two have a by car. four, yeah. some nails, sitting yeah. in the back of the bus. You know what? There might be people who don't know that story. Right. It's a good, Why don't it's you a good part of the story. spend a couple minutes to just give us a breakdown of how it got going? Well, when I discovered the shack, it was in terrible shape, and it needed a lot of work. And... Uh, and was, you were a student at the time, right? I was a student at the time. I was also working on the grounds crew at the MTC. I didn't have any money. Um, I didn't have a car. So basically, it was just kind of as scrappy as it could be. I'd pawn that Telecaster and uh, would take the bus down to Home Depot and get supplies. <laughs> and amazing. I just fixed it up. It took me about two or three months. And uh, the city wouldn't give me a permit until I like fixed it up, of course. But I couldn't turn the power on until i got a permit and so i'd have to like haul a generator up there and like fix stuff with a generator and uh so it was it was a lot of, it was pretty convoluted um i had this little fish tank light that because they wouldn't turn my power on until i you know fixed it up but i couldn't fix it up without power right. so don't think about that too much but uh, i had the generator there and this little fish tank light and took those as single light bulbs. And I don't know if there was like too much power coming in, but I would just burn those light bulbs out. And I would like go across the street to Campus Plaza and like basically tracked out, like, can I borrow a light bulb? And it just kept on going that <laughs> I was just so embarrassed that I just ended up stealing them from all like the pool <laughs> area. I would just jack the light bulbs just because I was just embarrassed to ask for more. Like it was literally like I had nothing. Right, unreal. And then you're like fixing it up. Well, you know what this is like. I do. I mean, you you had not the bus part. How many dollars did you have in your bank account when you left your family to go learn barbecue? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's it's just you know you you kind of do anything to get at it, and well, it, I, it worked out. I think you bring up something interesting, and I guess this is what this podcast is about. I have a lot of people come in now, which still baffles me. It's like me coming to you for advice, but. I have people come in and want to learn about, you know, what should I do to open a restaurant? And it's unbelievable how many people think they need all this money mm -hmm. and these means to open. Like, it's got to be perfect. I got to spend all this dough. And they don't realize that just you can, you know, here we are, what, 15 years later, you've got seven locations now, right? Yeah, maybe a few more. Maybe a few more. Well, if you count, if you count the stuff that we'll do for rice eccles, we just picked up a second one there. We'll be on the east and the west. Oh, hmm, hmm. Interesting. Well, say yeah. Say hi to those guys for me. <laughs> say hi to those guys for me. Hey, you paved the way. Tell man. them I'm still uh, waiting for that letter saying that we don't need you anymore. Hmm. I think we need to start a second is this podcast. Why your, is this why your hat's red now? The J Dog's hat. Hey, I'm a big fan of Coach Witt. I'm not going mean, like to hide coaches. it. I love them. I do. I like the coaches. I will cheer for them as long as they're not playing BYU. And it's not really a cheer. It's more of like, yeah, cool, they won. But Ooh. Coach Witt is classy dude. <sighs> okay. Sorry. I'll actually, I'm not sorry. I Listen, I actually like the guy. I like all those coaches. Don't forget who they offer the job to first. <laughs> Wait. What are you talking about? Because of Coach Witt, we have Bronco Mendenhall. That's and true. you love Bronco, I as do, do I. I do love Bronco. Yeah, so let's be grateful I am for a Coach Bronco Witt. advocate. And it would to, never have happened without used to get Kyle Whittingham. To fight with people about Bronco. That they didn't like him. Yeah, they don't. They don't know. So back to uh, back to the back story. to you. Not back to me, but no, just to it the is story. back to you. So I think that it's something that people need to realize. I think that you know we hope that people listen to this to say, I've got this great idea, but how am I going to get three hundred thousand dollars to open it? Yeah. I opened Bam Bams for forty five thousand bucks. Yeah, 
Well, That's I, not that much money. And you opened your shack for 900. 900 bucks. I want to go back to where he said 45 grand is not that much money. Well, I want to get in the scheme to of that things, point of life. In the where scheme I can of say things. That. I mean, to open a full restaurant. It's a big deal. That's that's not much. That's not much at all. Mm-mm. And so, but. I, I have to ask though, hot dogs. Mm-hmm. Where does that come from? Well, I was, uh, I was serving a mission for, I don't even know what, what do we say now? You know what? Peter at the Bell time, is, I, I was, was an LDS Mormon missionary, mission. Mormon, yeah, in Toronto. I like that. Yeah. I like that you're See, you're breaking me down. Gutsy. You're breaking me down. Gutsy, I love it. Gritty. Nitty so, gritty. So gritty. I'm a Mormon. Okay, sorry. Don't edit that out either. I did a I did a, a thing for BYU, <laughs> and I was like, I was serving a mission. They're like, no, 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 you can't say that. I'm like, what do you mean I can't say that? I was in Toronto. Oh, stop now. And uh, they had hot dog carts on all the street corners This downtown. is before J-Dogs. You were in Toronto. Yeah. On, on the mission. On the mission. Okay. I was working with the, the uh, Chinese people. And hung out in Chinatown, and it was a long way back to our apartment. So we just hung out and had lunch there, and lots of hot dogs. Toronto's in, actually in Chinatown, famous, famous for hot dogs. Yeah, really. They're all street corners. They call them street meat. They have one brand that everybody buys for. It's called Shopsy. Don't be gross. Jeez. And uh, yeah, they were a big deal. And I thought to myself, this would be cool in Provo. Are you gonna be okay? I'm sorry. I just <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's where uh, that's where the seed germinated, man. It was in Toronto. <coughs> so, like when you came back, you wanted like you just had the itch to open a hot dog shop. Not really. I I kind of let it marinate for a bit, and then uh, and then one day, just walking by that shack, I was like, man, that would be a good place if I were to start one. That'd be a great place. Yeah. But the impetus of the whole thing was, I was telling my dad about this. I was like, you know what? I'm going to drop out and start a hot dog stand. And he said. Googling impetus. Hold on. <laughs> um, he said, you know what? Uh, whatever you do, you never really finish anyway. So Your dad said that to you. Yeah. Because, you know, middle child syndrome and ADHD, the whole shebang. You like, you get 90%. The 10% goes unfinished. And... Uh, yeah, it hurt. It stung. Not going to lie. My dad's not going to listen to this. Well, he knows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it hurt. And uh, I was like, well, I'll show you. So it's like the proverbial middle finger. Right. And so I was committed. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that because he pissed me off. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. And that's what got me going. Would you say that's almost like the best advice you didn't take was not listening to your dad? Um, I would say not it's not not listening to my dad. It would be just listen to yourself. Yeah. You know, have faith in yourself, which I still struggle with. Yeah. As Bam Bam will tell you. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's hard. I'm like, I'm like his shaman. Yeah. Or his life coach. Yeah. In a sense. Bam Bam and Christy. I think I'm more like your Xanax. I think this is where you come to relax because I'm. Yeah. Your wheels are always turning. I'm a little bit more little like, bit. how can I relax? Mm. Like, I work when I have to work. Mm hmm. So yeah, we're a good pair like that. Yeah, I can just see it on your face. I'll, I'll hear the knock on the door. You know, I'll be in the middle of uh, watching some Game of Thrones or something in my yeah, office. Yeah, it's like eight thirty in the morning, and, and he's uh, watching Game of Thrones, which I've never seen either. <laughs> and the door swings open with Jay, and there it's me. And you could just see it. It's like, oh, that's what seven restaurants a, looks like. I've had a bad day, that's and it's what only eight thirty in the morning. Seven restaurants and six hundred employees looks like. I don't want that. And then I give him a hug. And then we sit you in the recliner together. Way. You send me on my way. And then he tells me all the things that could make my business better. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all things that I'm projecting on you that I need to do myself. Right. Right? Well, you know, it's you like I'm up. harping on you about a patio, but yet my patio in Provo <laughs> sucks. Really, you're talking about your cedar patio at your house. My cedar needs deck. needs to be redone with yeah. treks. You know, it's funny you brought up ADHD. I'm pretty open about the ADHD thing. Yeah. And I bet you find a lot of ADHD people in the restaurant world because of risk assessment. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. Yeah. It's like no executive what, function. So it's like, what's yeah, we the can worst a business that you could start? <laughs> I'm going to start a restaurant. What's right. the riskiest, right. longest hours, most stress? But I think that that, says, restaurant. Some, that, that says, says something. Yeah. Because it's like sometimes you just have to, you only live once, right? You got to yeah. try it. But I think it's more than that. It's your gregarious attitude of, you know, and. It's tantamount. Tantamount. 
Got it. <laughs> Tantamount was in that little article that was in all about that you. Taste magazine about yeah. me, and I had to Google it. And I just said today I'm going to use the word tantamount mm-hmm. in the podcast. So that, hence the laugh afterwards. But it's really about the people, being with the people. The restaurant. Absolutely. Oh, I agree. I totally agree. Yep. It's about making people happy. And there really isn't anything more rewarding than going out and just seeing people. That's one of the reasons Instant I love. Instant feedback. Two of my favorite people to feed are you mm. and Street Bike Tommy. Oh, never met him. I've like seen him on Instagram. He moans when he eats my food. It's almost awkward. Like he loves it. That was the first there it was there was a lot of moaning the first time <laughs> I ate your brisket. <laughs> Andrew's face. I was Hopefully with my brother in law Drew and uh we moaned. A lot of moaning. It was it was I can't even exp- it was so good. One of my favorite examples of mm. how much Jay loves this place. He was mad at me when I paved the parking lot mm. because he's like, I miss that. Just there's something about that gravel cracking under your tires. Yeah, the crunch you into the, the tires. Bam bams. Just so country. Like just, I don't know. Yep. I, I felt guilty afterwards. It's okay. I'm like, I just spent $60,000 to pave a parking lot and I made a total mistake. Yeah. For your landlord too. But don't you did start. It for him. Don't. No, I didn't. Well, don't let's start. Essentially it is. This is about you. Okay. Not about me. Okay. All, right. All right, so am I good to ask another question? I have another question. Go for it. Yeah. So one bit of advice you gave me in the beginning, and I want your reasoning for this, was like don't expand too fast. Yeah. So you've you've been expanding a lot lately. Is that but, a fat joke? No. <laughs> no. It's not nice. Physically, I think it's going the other way. I have feelings. I know you do. You, I, I don't think you're expanding. I don't know we, what the opposite we've opened, of we've opened is, a few. But. We've opened a few stores in the last few years, but s- rather slowly and never fast enough for anybody. Right. Right? It's what like do you mean you by d- that? Never fast well, enough for like, anybody? Well, you open up a store and it's like, so where are you going next? Oh, yeah. And we're literally having like the grand opening that yeah. night. So where's your next right. store? So there's this, there's this attitude. And I think, I think it's rather pervasive in Utah County of like wanting more, 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 more. Right, and right. Uh, I like to create stuff that'll last, and you know, just go at the pace that's comfortable for us. You know, we could open really fast, but you know, I just think it's—I personally think it's best to kind of hone your craft, right? And figure yourself out, and then do it, but not listen to anybody else. Do what's best for you. Any bad experiences with expanding too fast? Um, have you learned anything? Not expanding too fast, but picking the wrong spots. Picking the wrong spots. I did that. Yeah, as did I. <laughs> we never lost any money, but uh, oh, that's cool. I don't know why I threw it out there like that. <laughs> no, but it was just, it was just. Sometimes there's that. Oh, I got, I got to open another store. I got to be, got to be, you know, downtown, or I got to be in these like great trade areas that. Everyone thinks they're awesome, but reality is, you know, no one really knows. No one really knows. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want to play it really, really safe, you just kind of follow where like in and out and Burger goes. Yeah. They do all their research. Or movie theaters. Yeah. I've but, heard you good, know, no one knows. to be next to. They do tons of research. I also had the false uh, idea that the lifting, the rising tide would lift all the boats. You kind of go in this kind of ghetto shopping center and it's like, yeah, people will, <laughs> you know, I'm going to bring all these people in here and people will just kind of like, it's like on cars, you know, right. when they start fixing crap up at the end of the movie and it wasn't like that one bit. No. So yeah. After I, my five years, I was out. I think I know what location you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, American Fork. American Fork. It was great. It was great, but, you know, the burglaries and fires and vandalism and, you know. What is it about one side of the street, too? Yeah. You know, it's like you've got all this stuff right across Needles the street. Needles in the there. back alley, dudes, you know, sleeping back <laughs> we have, there we have and those here. taking the garbage out, and there's some crackhead. We have some awesome meth smoking places behind yeah. Bam Bams. People yeah. take advantage sad. of Sad. You can edit that out if you want. <laughs> it's sad. But it's true. <clears throat> but if you don't take risks, you know, you know, what are you going to. No risk, no reward. Yeah. Especially in the restaurant game. But see, I'm all gun shy now because, you know, we had Spanish Fork for two years and 
I thought it'd be great, but it just never really took off. But now when people ask me where I'm going to expand next, I'm just like, nowhere. What do you think? Let's just take a second and talk about that, if you don't mind. What? About, this is our podcast, okay? About Spanish Fork. Oh. What What was different about it than this no one? No lunch. That was really the big kicker. I think a lot of people work outside of Spanish Fork. Mm. And so we just, we had good dinners. We had good weekends. We did have four break-ins in the first year. You did. Spanish Fork is kind of crazy. It's kind of like our West Valley here. I don't spend much time down there because I can never find my, I can never find directions. Yeah, it's kind of laid out strange, but yeah. it's, so yeah, I mean, it was twice the rent is here, but I, you know, we had a lot of momentum here and there was good, you know, a lot of traffic. Why did you open it? Mostly just because it was turnkey. It was easy. It was already mm -hmm. a barbecue joint that had gone out of business, which probably should have been my red flag moment mm -hmm. right there. But Isn't it amazing when you look back at stuff, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, the equipment was there. Mm -hmm. All the furniture was there. I mm -hmm. basically just had to go in and put our own little spin on the place, you know, paint it, just mm -hmm. do a couple things. And so, you know, we signed a short lease, but I don't know. It just, it spread us a little thin and barbecue is a little different. You know, it takes a lot of time, and it's hard to teach people how to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, didn't work. But you live and you learn. Does that define you? No. Not no. a chance. Correct answer. No, and I have no problem talking about it. It's like, hey, are you bummed about Spanish Fork? I'm like, no, I got a raise the second that it closed. It was great. Yeah. I mean, it happens. If you don't fail, you don't learn anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, as a business owner, entrepreneur, you, it's, it's the wave you ride, right? Yep. And if you don't learn from stuff like that, then... You know, you, right. you can count on a failure, but if you learn from it, it's something that helped you and right. you move on, you get better. Yeah, I totally agree. But I'm curious, what would you consider to be like your biggest risk you've taken? I mean, some people would probably say opening. My guess is that's not what you're going to say. The biggest risk. Um, going out into new markets. I was going to say, it's got to be downtown, right? Downtown. Like, not only was it downtown and kind of out of your comfort, comfort zone of Utah County, but, I mean, it's a big, beautiful... Yeah, we... I got this... Uh, I was delivering dogs one day to the uh, Adobe building, and I just walked in, and I was like, wow, this place is beautiful. I just figured out who designed it. And I ran with that. It's a company in San Francisco. I ran with that, but at the same time, it was... Uh, it was it was quite a bit. I mean, it's a beautiful space. It's a historic building. Um, the price was way out of my comfort zone. Okay. Um, but I wanted to make a statement. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird to talk about this. I like it. Yeah, I wanted. I, I, I can wanted, see the I wheels wanted, turning right I now. I wanted to make a statement, but at the same time, I was like, "Well, what's wrong with?" The stuff because the stuff that we had done in Utah County, we had just done ourselves. Okay, and uh, you know, part of me said, "Hey, let's let's hire some design, not class it up, but just kind of like refine it a little bit." And uh, yeah, and it turned out beautiful. But at the end of the day, people are just there for the dogs, you know. Like no one walks into Bam Bams to see the chalk drawings the pictures. on the wall. So I have to ask, what made you feel? Like you wanted, like you had to class it up. You know what I mean? Like you'd had so much success under the model. What made you want to do it? Was it, I mean, was there a piece of like, Hey, I want to prove to everyone that I've kind of become yeah. successful. Yeah. That's a part of it. Okay. Um, I was a little out of my element with this, with the size of the place too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we could easily have gone, gone in there and done kind of the stripped down version of what we'd done in Utah County. But I felt like. I wanted to try something a little different, but then it, uh, I wouldn't say it got away from me, but then it just kind of, while every, I don't think anyone would go in there and go, wow, this is fancy. It's mm -hmm. just a departure from what we were doing before, but it's a nice departure. Yeah. Um, every store build out like that. Absolutely not. But how this, long, how long has it been since you've done that? That store three years, two, three years. Okay. And then we did a stripped down version. So if that if that store downtown is like business casual, the one we did in Midvale is like jeans, t shirt, and a nice watch. You know? <laughs> it's like a Bruce Springsteen album cover. You know, just kind of just That's a good description. Just kind of everyday working man, but with nicer finishes. Okay. And uh 
it's beautiful. So do you feel like that's the new model for you or do you do, <clears throat> are you trying to decide based off location, how you want to finish it? You know, with everything, everything that I do, I'm always like trying to get back to the shack, you know, just the simplicity okay. of everything. So like right now I view my role as, you know, instead of chief executive officer, I'm like the chief editing officer trying to strip down all that crap that we don't need. Right. And it's really, it's really hard to kind of, I mean, excuse me, it's really easy to kind of, it just snowballs into, you know, we have, we have this and we have this and we do things this way and this way and this way. And you, all of a sudden you walk in the restaurant and you go, man, what is all this stuff for? And you have storage units full of crap that you never need. Oh my gosh. And when, in, in, you know, in the beginning it was a 10 by 10 shack with a grill, a register and, you know, a prep top with condiments and that was it. And it was way more. Really? <laughs> really? Come on now. Come on, silence that thing. I was about ready to bear my soul, man. <laughs> that Who, is like. Who's Toby? I don't know. That is the biggest rookie move ever. And okay. I threw it on the table. This is pocket. only episode three. Get rid of it here. I'll put it on the couch uh, look, over here. Look, it's off. It's off. Look, I don't need parents here. <laughs> I'm a man. You're more than a man. I am more than a man. It's a pirate and an angel had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so strip down. You right want to get down? <laughs> <laughs> On the video? Yeah. Well, duh. Well, here we go. There. So you want to, yeah, the chief editing like, officer. That's yeah, where we were before just, my... Uh, you know, and those aren't my own words. That's, uh, that's a uh, Masters of Scale podcast with Reed Hoffman. He talked about editing, chief editing officer. But yeah, it's just it's kind of like what is important, what is not, and uh, it's actually very very difficult to keep a menu with two items and four or five condiment choices and not go. What about this? What about this? What right. about this? While it could be profitable, I just there's something about me that just wants to just kind of stay the course to the stuff that it's. Have that, you ever introduced something just to test it? I haven't. That's awesome. It is, but you know, in a way, it might be a little crazy to not to not. But I think it's uh, working out pretty good. So it is. It's been great. Oh, but good grilled onions and chili works so much better. Yeah, I mean, why not? Why not try something? Right. You know, we had talked about. I, I bug him swap about on, swapping restaurants for a week. Yeah, I bug him day. about grilled onions all the time. Chili, I mean, whatever. That, I mean, he's going to come into my place and do chili and grilled onions, and I'm going to come in his place and do. If you say sous vide, sous vide brisket. Oh my gosh, here we go. <laughs> the French barbecue cook. Hey man. <sighs> you know, it's funny to hear you talk about the menu because I feel like you've always been, hopefully this doesn't offend you, but slightly self-conscious about mm -hmm. just being a hot dog place. Like sometimes I feel like yeah, it's maybe you don't realize how special, like you're just like, it's just a hot dog place, whatever. Like I can't go to this event. It's just hot dogs. I, I don't what know. What do you how mean to by it? just? Yeah. What do you mean? I don't know. I just sometimes feel like you're I, some self conscious about having such a simple concept and menu that it's just hot dogs. It's nothing special. I mean, I know you think it's special, but yeah, I know. I, I I do get the specialness of it, but you know, there is that sometimes that self consciousness of like, is this all you do? Right. What else do you do? Right. And. Uh, you know, it, it, especially in the beginning days, is like you have all these like fantasies of like graduating college and getting some real sexy job and the suit and the car and the big house and Ugh. I got all that now, but just I just wear the suit With once hot a dogs. week. With hot dogs. With hot dogs. See, that's what that that's my point right there. Is yeah, you got to be I, comfortable in you, your own casing. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. You got to be comfortable in your own casing. That's a hot dog reference. Yeah. 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 Sausage hot dogs yeah. wrapped in casing. But it does get a little tiring sometimes when all your identity feels like sometimes it's wrapped up with hot dogs, right? It's like you get that too. But at like, least you have some hey, identity. Bam, bam. Hey, how's, you know, can I get some free or how's the, True. you know, that's all they ever want to talk about. Yeah. And I definitely get that. And so you get a little kind of self conscious about. Sometimes you just want to go, just hide, you right. know. But that's why I stay away from the brisket section at Costco. <laughs> I always have to give a lesson. Do you ever get that? Do you All ever? Do you ever get that? Hey, uh, so you eat other stuff besides hot dogs? 
<laughs> it's like at the grocery store and you've got stuff. And you're like, oh, you're uh, branching out, huh? Like, like, is, yeah. that, is that lettuce? Uh, yeah. What are you getting that for? I thought you just ate hot dogs. Are those yeah. onions? Yeah. Grilled onions. But yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to get out of Costco and Sam's Club without some sort of. If I've got like a case of right whatever, like buying something for the store, going, wow, <laughs> that's a lot of mustard. <laughs> and I'm always like, yeah, Oktoberfest is around the corner. You know, you, you got to stock up. You should just start buying beer just to like throw a little wrench in people's. Oh my gosh! I saw Jason. He had beer. But then you say you're boiling hot dogs. I keep at it. it at my house just in case you pop right. by. Oh well, I if you that. ever come by for dinner, the Heineken Zero that just came out. Yeah, near beer. No, Warm it's funny. Near beer. That that I do get that a lot, and I think that is one bad thing about you and I being the size that we are. We are easily noticed. Yeah, it's hard to hide. It is hard. Like I stopped wearing my shirt, like Bam Bam shirts, mm-hmm. out in public, just because it's like. It's not like people really know who I am, but if they if I have the shirt on, then they're like, "Oh yeah, that's the Bam Bam's guy." Mm-hmm. It sounds. I kinda... went through like four or five years when I never wore J Doc stuff. Right. Yeah, I and mean, I'm just kind of like getting back into it because I'm like, you know what, whatever, you just gotta own but it. Every right. conversation now is, but it's great though because honestly, when people talk, they're telling me their story. Exactly. And like, how? Who else would you do that with? Right. Oh, I went into. I went into CarMax and I had, you know, like if you find out that you're a car salesman, I yeah. would never like, but right. for some reason they have to tell me, they they want to tell me about their first experience or that they have a bottle of sauce in their fridge or they did some, you know, some sort of family event and somebody had to have it. And somebody was like, just recently was like, yeah, grandma died. We were going back to the funeral and, <laughs> you know, we no. had, we had your sauce and grandma in the carry on. <laughs> oh no. And then I'm like and then I'm just like waiting for this waiting for the rest of the story like <laughs> and that was it. Grandma came undone and the sauce came undone and there was like a mixy mixy. <laughs> but it was like, you know, TSA didn't say anything about the urn, but they wanted to know what's the sauce. sauce. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's really funny. Yeah, I love Do you of- have a favorite customer story? I mean, Ooh, I can't I can't think of, you know, one, but we've we've like Does any- it does it happen a lot? I mean, that's a not, lot. I mean, I'm not in that world. A lot. And so, is that common? That Daily, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's pre- it's pretty great, and it is great, and it's that'd, ours, be, a lot, that'd think, be a lot of fun to hear that. It, you, but you always have to be on and cordial okay. all that's the time. The, that, yeah. So that's the I hard that. part. I get like that. that. And that's what you have to remember: is it's cool to have an identity. Like if we just had normal jobs, like a job that you'd say, you know, the sexy job out of college or whatever. For those of you that went to college. <clears throat> Um, you know, it is kind of cool to, to have people know, you know, you've created something that people love and care about. It's a brand that people, and that just... you can't, ref- you can't forget that. Like somebody coming up and asking me how to do a brisket in Costco, I should be like, Hey, I mean, how cool is that? Like they love the product I make mm-hmm. and they just want a little help with it. Like it's just salt and pepper and heat, right? Salt and pepper and heat. Yeah, yep. little well, sweat people there, are fanatical. there's not much to it. Right, people are fanatical and obsessed. I mean, you hear different brands, Bam Bams, and you know J Dogs, and when they like it, they love it. Right, there's usually not people who are kind of like in the middle. <laughs> Even know? people that love it, though, one thing that I struggle with, and I don't know if I'm sure you do, because of like the menu. I mean, I would consider my menu simple. Yours is very simple, right? In and outs is simple. Mm-hmm. But where we're smaller, like. You have seven stores, right? But you're still, you know, say regional. Mm-hmm. Like you're more accessible, so it's easier for somebody to just come up. And people don't realize how annoying this can be. Like, hey, that's why. I know, like, I feel like we're close enough where I can bring up the grilled onions thing. Sure. But I would never go. Like, would you ever go to your grandma and say, "Oh man, your potato salad's good," but there's this recipe that I found. Yeah. That if you just did it like that, like Everyone's my grandma would kick me in the balls. Like she would be so mad at me, yeah. And I'm like, that's the hardest thing for me <laughs> is when somebody tells me like, yeah, I like your mac and cheese, but man, you should bake it. Oh, I hate baked mac and cheese. Well, so do I. But I mean, it's just does it happen a lot? A lot, all the time, all of really? the time. Yep. It, it's so funny that people there's no, think there's like, no filter. No, and that's even face to face. The stuff online gets. Oh yeah, gets Twitter, nasty. Twitter, anything online. I can't even imagine online, but I'm surprised that people there. dare do it. Oh, yeah. I, don't even, I don't even read it. I don't read any reviews. Never. Really? Ever. Yep. Did, I'm, did you when you started? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, and I stopped because of how mad I'd get. Yeah, it it, it just it even would, four it star would reviews would make me mad. Like, it would get bad. like, yeah, really good, but kind of expensive. And I'm just like, ah! like I'm 15 hours cooking that brisket. Like, yeah. you got to be kidding me. How do you run out? I can't believe you'd run out of food. They're, like, they're always kind of want to make money. One off, right? These outlier mm-hmm. comments. If you start seeing a pattern, you know that's one thing. But yeah, basically the philosophy I have now is like. The Brene Brown philosophy is like, if you're not in the arena getting your ass kicked too, I don't care about yep. yeah, I love what you quote. have to say. She's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love that quote. So that's kind of my philosophy now. And that's why I've kind of gravitated towards, you know, we talk and there's a couple other restaurant guys that I talk to, but uh-uh, really, excuse me. one other. I thought it was just, I thought we had a thing. We do have a thing. <laughs> so would you say that you have someone like, obviously you'd Cam to come to. Do you have like that that group that when you do need help or when you're gonna you know have a new idea that you're gonna go bounce it off of them? I bounce it off my guys. I've got a great group of guys that I work with, um, and then there's a few others that have kind of mentored me, and occasionally I'll talk to them. But usually it's like either my guys or Cam or you know my wife that okay. will just kind of bounce stuff. You are surrounded by some awesome people. Super but I think awesome that says people. a lot I about awesome people. I think that says a lot about you too. And I, I think that that's a pattern you see with a lot of successful business people is they've oh, hired sure. hired up, married up. Yep. Hey, I'm here. Back. I'm right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop staring at my <laughs> The Green starts. Masters no man. It's yeah, like he's great, isn't he? I was thinking about my golf. I'm just worried about him looking at you. But married married up. You for did. sure. She's awesome. And Justin? Incredible. My boy Tom. Incredible. Like just you have great, great managers. We could keep going. With we could keep going. Thick and thin. Yeah. So I gotta ask, is you have Annie, you have a handful of others. Um, yeah. just I mean, everybody when you see Annie, just say thank you for working here because the second she quits, you're Bam Bam's is over. You're done. I am shutting the doors. How do you and, do and it? Bryce. Bryce is the same thing. Yeah, Annie and My Bryce. Cook. I mean, did you I'm not gonna say get lucky, but have you had them always or did you learn what you were looking for? There is some luck involved, but I, I think there's some providence involved too. And, uh, you know, all my guys that work for me, some of them like have been working for me since college and then they, they've just kind of stayed and uh, more and more responsibility. Um, some, you know, my longest tenured employee, Justin, I've always said, dude, you got to come work for me. And then he actually lost his job. And then it was like, and the then he, he showed up at the shack, and I'm like, let's go. Put on an apron. Let's do this, you know? Um, so, yeah. I mean, I've just been very fortunate to always have great people. Yeah. And uh, what's the what would you say is the number one thing you can do to retain them, or that you do to retain them? I know that might be a little... Uh, um, like, if, if you were to ask them, why are they still there? Well, that's a good question. They'll Why probably don't we tell ask you Justin. Let's bring him in. Just kidding. <laughs> There's probably he'll probably tell you different things than what I would say. Um, there's not a lot of looking over their shoulder. There's some autonomy. Um, you use a lot of big words. You're really smart. I'm not. <laughs> um, but I th- I think just creating an environment that people like to be in. Okay. Um, the job is is uh it's exciting you're not you know he tells me if i had to be in a cubicle all day i'd just go crazy you know so there's that he's a high energy dude it's super high energy that's perfect um, for he, him there's a lot of mental work there's a lot of physical work um but again like we said initially it's that it's a high to to feed to, to feed somebody to take care of somebody um and then seeing that instant feedback on their face when they bite into a dog and they're paying you cash to do it. Right. And then they come. It's just, it's pretty special. And I don't know anything else. So, uh, and I'm not speaking down on any other professions. It's just something that the people that stay in the business are usually like people, people. They're like party throwers, not party goers. Right. And uh, Ooh, what a great line. Yeah. That's when we were trying to hide way. people, uh, hire people. It's like we look for party throwers, not party goers. Huh. Just people that like to. That's my mentor right there. I'm going to steal that's that one. That's a J original. Do you want another J original that I use in here all the time? Sure. 
I just used it with uh, James Empey the other day, the O lineman from BYU. He mm-hmm. works here now in the off season, and mm-hmm. you're like mini Qualtrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me yeah. all your retired That's athletes. Right. You're he's to not be retired. Free. Hey, he's only a sophomore. We got him for a while, <laughs> but his uh, his wife works here too. And I walked out the other day, and this is what I love about athletes is they're used to being coached. They're used to being, you know, we'll call it disciplined, right? They want to be told what to do, right? And so I walk out, and he's kind of leaning on the counter. And I said, "Hey, man." If you got time to lean, there's time to clean. <laughs> and he popped right up. He's like, oh, man, you're right. I, I'm sorry. What? Yep, I'll find something to clean right away. And I'm like, oh, I love athletes. Like, they just, there's no, like, excuse me or no attitude. It's just, boom. Responsive. Yeah, you know, he's raised right, too. Good parents. Yeah. But, but, yeah, Jay's got a lot of those. So, all right, so I want to shift gears for a second. Okay. Because I think it's kind of like what we've been talking about just in the last few minutes, how the restaurant kind of defines – you right it, it can but I, i've been learning a lot about you outside of the restaurant and i think it's mm-hmm. kind of cool for people to know some of the stuff that you do because you're a talented dude you love cooking at home i do love to you cook. do love to barbecue i love to bar i love to grill right i love to barbecue now something like that you smoke. invited me to the other day was kind of surprising to me because you're about to turn 40 40 years old yeah. i just experienced that in march feel young as ever i'm sorry i missed your party yeah it's okay. i was in mexico yeah. And the I called party. you from Mexico. The dog I texted party. You. He, you did. And I really sweet. wanted to bring my dog to your party. Yeah, little the little background on the story. My wife threw my my she threw a surprise fortieth birthday party. Cam likes dogs more than people. I do love dogs. I have two like two hundred pound dogs. I have a Newfoundland named Zeus and a uh, Bernese Mountain dog named Frank. Well, I show up and there's like forty of my favorite people in in the house. I had no idea. But she told everybody to bring their dogs. So there was probably 25 dogs in the backyard. So I just was like quick handshakes, like, oh, thanks for coming. Then I was out in the pile of dogs. <laughs> it was awesome. It was great. So, but back to you. So you're about to turn 40. And what, what's going on on your 40th? I'm going to. You uh, told me about? Yeah, I'm going to. Are have we okay a, to talk about this? Yeah, I'm going to have a piano recital. I mean, come on. You're going to huh? have a piano recital? Yeah. See, look at that look do from a both Brent so and I took, Andrew. I took piano lessons great. all growing up, but okay. then decided in you know, high school it wasn't cool, right? Mm-hmm. But it actually is cool. It's very cool. Yeah. But I decided, you know, it's not cool. And my piano teacher moved away, and I tried somebody else for a while, and I didn't love her. So I stopped and then just kind of stayed at the same level until, you know, I'm 39. And then I just said, I'm going to get myself out of my comfort zone. And so a really good friend of mine is the director of the piano and keyboard at uh, uh, BYU. Studied at Juilliard and NYU. Yeah, he's the man. Whoa. He's played at Carnegie Hall. He's insane. You didn't just find like a neighbor that does this no. thing part time. So I go up to campus once a week and it, you know. So you're on a Steinway, it, dude. It you're beats you're me like up. playing on the top notch Yeah, equipment. it's a Steinway B. See, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool that I know that, right? Yeah. Steinway. Steinway's cool. It's I learned a good that piano. on Green Book. It's a it's a pretty good piano. Yeah, it is. It's and, the uh, best piano. No, it's not. It's not Yamaha. No. Nope. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. No. Fazioli. Oh, really? It's an Italian made piano. <coughs> would BYU, your, would BYU your friend has say that? two. Yeah. They went Whoa. over to Italy and brought home an eleven footer. They're That's gonna they're gonna run you about, right there. It's gonna set you back about two fifty. Fazioli. Fazioli. Oh 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 I'm sorry. You gotta say Fazioli. it right. Fazioli. Yeah. Two fifty, two fifty, as in K, like yeah. thousand. Uh huh. For just, a piano? Oh yeah. I'd rather have a house. But well, whatever. It's pretty. If incredible. I learned at Juilliard, now is that good? It's like me with smokers, right? Yeah. There's some smokers that twenty five G's. Stump smoker. No, not a stump smoker. <laughs> <laughs> Although those are good. Those are cool. But yeah, like a handmade austin smoke works like so anyway i'm swimming in the deep end right now and you uh, are yeah every you know when the piano lesson rolls around i get a little pit in my stomach and uh, it's intimidating and uh, but it's it's good so i'll be we're gonna have a, a recital at the end of the year we're gonna be there you're coming so the nitty gritty is gonna be there we're bringing yeah. microphones yes. chopin nocturne number two and we're gonna Whoa. play a little gershwin piece so, it's gonna be good how many people out there know this i bet nobody does that I play piano? The, that you're playing Chopin in a recital on your 40th birthday. Like you, you're this musical. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm barely through like the first like 12 bars right now. It's like, it's difficult. Listen, but it'll, I don't even know what a bar is. 
Yeah, you do. A chocolate bar, I know what it yeah. is. Yeah. You gotta be nice to yourself, man. I, I am nice to myself. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Self love. Listen, this body sells barbecue, bro. It's good advertising. If I look like him, he looks like somebody that manages your money. Like, I'd want Andrew to, like, I'm still waiting to be a client <laughs> to, to manage my, you know, estate. He's a brilliant guy. I got to stop talking about it. I said that like three times in the last podcast. It got brought up a handful of times. But you know what? Big deal. I'm, a, I'm an open book. But so anyway, piano it's, recital. You're it's coming. Very cool. So you're a musical guy. Can I, you sing? I do sing. Doesn't surprise me. And then I the won Telecaster a thing. Uh, karaoke contest on the Princess Cruise Line. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I did. Oh my gosh, this yeah. is awesome. There's a bottle of champagne. <laughs> I gave it to the, it I gave it to the guy, the runner up, because he was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about the guitar? You you pawned the Telecaster. Well, everybody everybody kind of plays the guitar, right? But I wouldn't call myself uh, a guitar player. Guitar hero. I, I know a I'm few songs, but that's that. about it. But piano's my jam. That's really interesting. Yeah. So okay. is that kind of is that kind of your thing right now? You're trying to, it, yeah. I mean, uh, so also the last year I started seeing a life coach slash therapist. Okay, just kind of work out some of the knots that you uh, that you got up in your brain after 40 years. That's been great for me. Um, it really is great when people will get over the fact that you're, you know, you're going to open up and talk to somebody else. But yeah, it really does do. Well, it's so important to share that you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I tell people all the time, it's like everybody should go to marriage counseling. Yeah. Life coach, like therapy, doesn't matter. Like those people can save your life. It's like we change oil in cars. Like why wouldn't we go to see somebody a few times a year to just make sure that we're. I, I have to on ask track. though, was there something that motivated you to do that? Or is it more kind of the desire to kind of better yourself? No, it was, uh, it was more just kind of talking talking to a friend and he suggested he's like you ought to go see christy and uh so i called her up again it's like completely vulnerable talking about stuff and it's still hard to kind of like open up she's always like feeling is healing like well i don't want to heal because i don't want to feel right now you know and that's half the half the problem i guess but uh it's been good for me because a lot of times too you know cameron will account to this is like when you're when you're the top dog, you're not really accountable to anybody but yourself. And it's, it's just good to have someone hold you accountable to things. An accountability partner. Look at all the top athletes, any top performer anywhere. Accountability is good. Yeah. Therapy is, is great. You ever go to marriage counseling? I haven't. No, I should have. You guys should try it. It's fun. I was too, I was too proud. Uh, last time when she suggested it years ago when we were, who suggested it? My wife. Heidi. Really? Yeah. I was too proud. Yeah, that's. I think that's a pretty common thing around here. You know, people are really, really hesitant to just, like, why? Well, I don't need therapy. Things are great. Well, it's because you're like, almost admitting a failure. Right. Like, well, we're all failures. Yeah. I mean, who does anything perfect? Right. And it's good to have neutral. Yeah, it's good to have Brent raises his hand. It's good to have neutral ground. Just, I mean, yes, generally the man is wrong. I've learned that. Mm -hmm. And we also case. load the dishwasher wrong. We fold towels yeah. wrong. Okay, and then I load the dishwasher right, though. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. That's, you're an anomaly. Yes. And then you're not supposed to. Uh, but I do fold the towels. Cut wrong. paper with sewing scissors. There's oh, that's such a mom thing. Didn't My your mom, mom ever give you the, the scissors time. talk, Jay? I'm like, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> See, that's Heidi, what I say. When's you. the last time you sewed anything? <laughs> she <laughs> I, sews I have a lot. Holes man. in my shorts. Two pairs of shorts still. My wife hasn't said anything with a dishwasher because if I do it, she's. Yeah, it's a big deal. She's happy with there's it. There's a certain way. There's a Livingstone way, and then there's the wrong way. What's the Livingstone way? That's is that the hiding in name? all of her. <laughs> that her maiden members, name? Man. There's a Livingstone way, and there's the wrong way. Oh, that's right. what Jenna says about me. Fine. I get mad at Jenna when she loads the dishwasher because mm. she doesn't do it right. Yeah. She doesn't get enough dishes in. Really? No. I mean, it's pretty common sense, right? You can't put too much in the bottom because it won't go to the top. My dishwasher just broke this week. Everything breaks at my house. Hmm. I'm so sick of it. Okay, enough about that. What else do we need to know about you? What you, What else are you curious about right now? I know you cook a lot. I do cook a lot. I do like, like I get pictures from you all the time of stuff that you're cooking. Yeah, and I think that that's kind of cool. I I think that there's a lot of people that they don't stay passionate about. I heard a great quote the other day from Laird Hamilton. You know, do you guys know who that is? Mm -mm. 
very famous big wave surfer, married mm. to Gabby Reese, the famous volleyball player. Sure. Um, he goes, the second your memories, basically I'm paraphrasing, the second your memories are bigger than your dreams, mm. you might as well just off yourself. <laughs> you know, and I was just like, that was really interesting. Just because he's like 58, mm -hmm. getting older, and he's done, I mean, he, he invented hydro fo like foil boards he invented toe and surfing hmm. i mean this guy has lived an incredible life but he's still creating he's still finding things that he's passionate about even at that age and, yeah um i think that that's really important to i think with jobs especially when you own your own business it's so easy to just get stuck in that rut pattern doing the same thing every day and not searching for something to take you out of your comfort zone to keep you excited about things. Like I think back of when I started cooking barbecue, like the screw up days when the food was horrible. I was in the backyard, but just had like loud music on. I wasn't feeding anybody. It was, but it was so much fun mm -hmm. and you can kind of lose some of that joy, but there's ways to find that joy in other things, yeah. but you have to keep looking. So like when you told me about the piano thing, yeah, I immediately just thought that is amazing. Right. Like, I'm not doing anything like that right now. That's well, okay. And I've got to find something because, I mean, that's really something to look forward to. And it's a, it's a healthy thing. It's a healthy escape. It's good for the brain. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Right. So what else, what, what's in the pipeline? Is there anything else like that on the hobby side that you do a lot with your family? I do a lot. You love sports. I do You're love sports. You're a massive Cubs fan. Because my son is a massive Cubs fan. So that's our kind of bonding thing. Right. And Pokemon Go. Poke really? Oh, absolutely! Right here, I can hit your Poke. Yeah, stop I've got, I've the, got to stop. That's right. I know. <laughs> I put that on Instagram once, and the, I had all these creepy people in the backyard, the surplus, like the surplus place. That's up, right. Yeah, so I can just spin those wheels, man. Oh, that was so yeah. weird. I'd had these like random people walking yeah. in the back of the restaurant. I'm like, can I help you? Oh, uh, sorry, you, there's a Pokemon here, and <laughs> like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's a little crazy, but uh, no, basically just uh, my family and J Dogs and. Big family guy. You're with your family a lot. I am with my family I like a lot. You've got a great family. I do. Your wife's pretty cool. She's amazing. Yeah. she's. You married the perfect person because I feel like she can... But, you, you know, because you, you're an intelligent guy. You've got your... Uh, you've got your... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You're very, you're sure of yourself. Like, Ebbs and you, flows. Yeah. You think you're, you know, not... You think you're a pretty intelligent person. I read a so lot. I, you do read a lot. But I can tell I, with the I didn't do lot well. of syllables I didn't, in your I didn't words. do well in school. See, I didn't either. And I did terribly on the ACT. I didn't even and take that. I don't even know how I got into BYU. Yeah. You Honestly. Wouldn't, you wouldn't know. Oh, heck no. <laughs> yeah. You know, you look at you look back and go, I never, I never could have dreamed that this was even possible. Right? That, oh, dude. That picture of you sitting in front of the shack with... Yeah. Your wife with your hat backwards, you look like you're 12. <laughs> yeah, and, I was you know, 24, 25. It's just crazy 25. to think where you're at now. I never could have dreamed. And, uh, you know, the biggest the biggest key of everything is just being grateful for stuff. Because there's always something bigger and better, you know. But just being grateful. It's pretty, it's an incredible life. It is important to stay hungry and stay scrappy. But for me, it's about improve. Like, how can I improve what we have? Right. Because I don't think about, I want more. Like, I honestly never think about, you know, the financial side or any type of, like, fame or anything or glory from having more. But it's just, how can I improve and how can I stay relevant? Right. Relevant to who, though? Just relevant in general. Like, you know, because you know, if you, as you're growing, you're always kind of, like, replacing yourself. You're bringing people on or offloading your responsibility to somebody else and then you just kind of say, well, what am I going to do now and uh that's a, cr a crappy feeling but you know you just kind of go through those iterations every now and then of what am I going to do right and uh yeah so it's fun it's always a challenge and I'm enjoying it 15 I, years in that's good you yeah need to enjoy it yeah this has been oh, awesome. This has been awesome. This has been great. Like, we could keep going for a while, I have a feeling. We should do an argument one where we fight about <laughs> politics and stuff and teams. After the podcast. Uh, yeah, and after the podcast. The beef bros. <laughs> beef it out. <laughs> street on the meat. B beef it out. The meat on the street. What did you say earlier? Street meat. Street meat. Yeah. 
I might have to make a sandwich called the street meat. Yeah. We could probably cook something up. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. We love you, and we love your, your hot dogs. Thank you. 